What is good? We're back. Got a bipod going on here. Um, my guys are, are back from being sick, but out of town and, and Matt has family in town. So uh, John Bauer was nice enough to uh, join us, uh, becoming a regular on the show. How you doing, John? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, getting back in the swing of things. I mean, you can tell I'm, I'm still a little stuffed up over here myself, but that wasn't going to keep me from getting to talk with you. No way. <laughs> what a what a guy. Um, and you can you can find John on the Twitter at the Bauer Club and you can find his podcast at Dynasty Theory FF. Um, that's the Dynasty Theory Fantasy Football Podcast. Those guys are wonderful over there. Uh, make sure you, you go check out the Patreon. Um, they got a John's responsible for a great uh, usage sheet. Um, I, I believe that's only that's you. And I feel like your other guys are anti uh, numbers. They're not. They, well, it is me. I'm the one putting all that stuff together. <laughs> but they're, I wouldn't say they're anti numbers, but certainly if they went through an episode and didn't, didn't have to discuss a number, they wouldn't be opposed to it. You know, so mm-hmm. uh, I don't want to say they're anti, but they're certainly not pro. Right. Right. I like it. I like it. Um, and you guys record every Tuesday. Is, is that correct? Nine o'clock on the YouTubes. Every Tuesday we are live at nine o'clock Eastern over on the Dynasty Theory YouTube channel. And then it uh, we circulated out on the podcast feed usually hits, you know, an hour when we're we're done recording. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, make sure you go check those guys out. A lot of good content over there. We've enjoyed having John on. And uh, I think we're going to maybe get some some group stuff going on as we get further in the rookies, do some mocks together. So uh, but today we're going to talk a little a little bit of 23 class, not more as necessarily individually. Um, and then we're going to kind of play worth a first for a little while and go through a bunch of different groupings um, and have a little bit of fun there. So you ready to roll? I'm ready. I, I, I'm looking at the names you have on this list. Just the conversation in general. I'm, I'm excited to jump in. All right. Well, let's let's start with the uh, question. And I know there's been a lot to to it's been a lot to live up to. And that's where kind of this question comes to. Is the 23 class living up to the hype? Is it a bust so far? How are you regarding the picks? I know, you know, the quarterback class certainly isn't as strong as maybe we wanted it to be. So the super flex people who are, I think most people in general right now and the wide receiver class is being made out to not maybe be super duper strong. But I, th- I think right now, maybe that's because Addison and, you know, Smith and the Jigba are, you know, maybe a little bit smaller guys and the Jigba is a little bit more of a, maybe going to profile as a slot and, and Addison's not a huge guy. You don't, you don't really have too many bigger guys necessarily at the top. Uh, for the wide receivers and and the running backs are certainly seemingly living up to the hype. But let me let me get your thoughts on on how those picks are holding value for you, what you're thinking about it, and, and kind of the class as a whole. Is it, do you feel at all that it is a bust? Is it a bust? No. Now the big thing is, and we talked about this uh, for quite some time in our Discord, uh, probably a couple of weeks ago, but the comparison was made. Well. During the off season, you could not get a 23 first 12 team super flex. Let's assume that, you know, throughout this conversation for like a Chris Godwin or somebody like that. And now today you couldn't move a late 23 first in a lot of spots to get somebody like a Chris Godwin. And I don't think it's so much a reflection on the 23 class itself during the off season, a lot of it's going to be, well, it's a random 23 first, especially if you just had the startup and, and you don't really know how things are going to shake out with your league. But also, even if it's an existing league, sure, there's teams that look really strong on paper or they look weak on paper. But for the most part, I would say eight, nine teams, you know, have a shot to go from the 102, 103 to the 108, 109, somewhere around there. And that's the big thing. So if you're comparing the value of a first today versus the value of a random first prior to the season, yeah, there's going to be a discrepancy because for the most part right now, the teams that are moving those 23 firsts, they were teams that were jockeying for position. They were looking to make a move, bolster their lineup, and contend this year. So it's assumed to be a later first. And that's kind of the issue at hand when it comes to comparing the price 
in value of first off season versus today, because now we have the defined range and most likely, you know, you pick within one or two spots, especially if it's, you know, if it's a playoff team where that's going to be. And if you didn't make the playoffs, well, it's set in stone. And those aren't the teams that are moving those picks most likely. So that's one thing. But then the other thing here, you know, discussing it from a super flex aspect, a lot of the value of picks, it doesn't matter what year it is. The value really is driven by running backs and quarterbacks. And there's a lot of question marks around Stroud and he has that Ohio state stigma. Sure. And then there's, there's questions around young and his size. And I, he's listed at six feet tall. I, I don't know how that dude's six feet tall. <laughs> I, I program. Maybe, That's a program height. Yeah. Maybe he comes in five, 10 or five eleven, but he's light too. And I know that's a concern for people, but the dude's a playmaker. He, he did it at the, the, top level throughout all of college, obviously in the sec, but after those two, you have Anthony Richardson, who is going to be that, that divisive quarterback. And you're going to have people that love him, and they love his athleticism, especially if he goes mid to later first in the NFL draft. Well, maybe he goes into a good situation or at least a decent situation, or he's in a situation where he can sit for a year. I mean, Lamar Jackson was the last pick of the first round, right? And he could sit and, you know, they, they threw Flacco out there and then Lamar Jackson comes in and saves Harbaugh's job essentially. But, you know, so I I think Richardson could kind of be that type of prospect Mm -hmm. that it's a really high ceiling, really low floor. And then you have Will Levis also, who's going to be I I think he's going to be that guy this year. He strong arm, you know, bigger white dude. I mean, he's that prototypical old school quarterback that scouts and these older guys in the NFL, they like, and I mean, we saw Brock Osweiler. Oh my God, this dude, this guy's going to be it. Well, we saw how that played out and I'm not saying Will Levis is Brock Osweiler, but I think he's going to get the NFL draft capital. He's going to be top 10 and we'll see how that translates to the opportunity and the the value that we see in 12 team super flex rookie drafts but the the running back position here i'm still super intrigued yeah I, you got to be run back to the quarterbacks real quick it just mostly seems that you don't have a a clean prospect to get super excited about there's a yeah but with just about every single one of them um and we saw the you know last year i thought the nfl for once kind of did a good job of not just jamming around peg into a square hole or a square peg into a round hole rather. Um, And it seems like this year, maybe um, these guys maybe all kind of seemingly have higher ceilings and they're more polished and are come from blue, more blue chip, uh, you know, programs. So it's making these guys maybe a little more willing to, um, you know, but it's certainly interesting. And I think that is, you know, I think you brought up a good point that they're definitely drivers of value of the class. And we thought maybe beginning of the, of the season that you would have the Van Dykes in here. Mm -hmm. Um, as I'm missing another guy, but you know, hooker got hurt at the end of the season. Um, I'm missing somebody else. I forget who, but there was one thought at one point thinking that there's, you know, six really strong quarterbacks and it's really down to like a question mark at all the quarterbacks. So I think that's, certainly hurting the value of, of maybe some people's eyes of value on this class, but the running backs um, seem to be uh, kind of very deep and, and you kind of got them all different shapes and sizes with different sorts of skill sets. Um, so it's going to be uh, very divisive, I th- you know, throughout the off season where how these running backs kind of shape up and tear out. What, what do you like? What do you don't like? Um, you know, I'm sure we'll have some differences. I'll be interested to see who, who you know, who you like and and what the numbers, you know, oh, kind of yeah. kind of say and and you know, I, I like to live in both worlds, um, but ultimately I'm gonna uh, kind of just lean on, um, you know, if I think he can play or not. As silly as that sounds, but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, I I need the thresholds. But there's gonna be certain times where I'm gonna ignore that threshold and just be like, now nah, fuck that. Uh, but yeah, what what do you think about the running backs? This always happens in Dynasty Theory too, but you said something. I, I want to go back to yeah, the quarterbacks one more time. Yeah. Um, but I, I happens think on the FF Dynasty all the time too. Yeah. It right. Just, yeah. You just keep bouncing back and forth. It's like yeah. ping pong. But yeah. you you mentioned the quarterback prospects, and they all have that yeah, but and a lot of it is 
even with quarterbacks like Lawrence, he had a different obstacle to overcome in Urban Meyer and the Jacksonville Jaguars in his rookie year. But you had a really strong quarterback class on paper in uh, Fields, Lawrence, Lance, Zach Wilson, Mac Jones. And look how that's played out. I think people feel a little burnt by that. And it's going to be in the back of people's minds whenever it comes time to push that draft button on a certain player and it's certainly going to come up and you look at the guys that have kind of fizzled the look at some of the, the quarterbacks that have like Kyler Murray. He he has his, his issues and there there's is, you know, concerns there. And I believe we talked about him to, uh, a bit two weeks ago. I, maybe we did. Maybe we didn't. I don't know. Um, but anyway, that that's going to come into play for the quarterback, certainly. Um, and then back to the running backs, I still have. So I need this college season to wrap up so I can get all the final, you know, college dominator, uh, rushing, receiving market share data, all that good stuff. And it is going to be interesting because it always comes up. And like Kenneth Walker last year was a perfect example and Damian Pierce as well. You look at these guys and they don't have those thresholds from a receiving perspective, but then weighing it and looking at the college program they came from, how much of it is dictated by the system and the quarterback, you know, the maybe Kenneth coach. Walker. The, exactly. Maybe, maybe Kenneth Walker didn't get the necessary target share that I certainly would like. I I've said it before. I like my call. I like my backs. that are, are going to catch passes and sure. And he's been able to exceed expectations here in year one. But there, there's certain things like that. You, you mentioned being able to look at a player. Can he play? And there are certain things that aren't going to show up on the spreadsheets. And that kills me because I wish everything had an answer. Right. Bl- black or white in the spreadsheet. But there is certainly a lot of gray area. But you'll B. John Robinson. Jameer Gibbs. I love Sean Tucker. I think he's going to be the running back that I might be the most overweight on from a shares perspective. Uh, You know, and I think a lot of people are going to look at raw numbers and you, but then you look at it from, well, did you see that offensive line play in Syracuse? Yeah, it was a disaster. Um, uh, but, he, he, he he immediately stands out with I, I think you know with with me watching as well um you know I watch more pro than than college just because I have to pick kind of one and yep. in season the dyna- I'm going to talk more dynasty fantasy football so I feel like I need to watch a little more pro um and I, I just don't have enough time to watch too but I, I watch what I can and then I go back and try to fill in the blanks listen to stuff watch stuff and I've watched you know got gotten into a little bit of Tucker but Tucker seems like a very divisive uh, prospect. It feels like people either love him or hate him. Um, and I can't figure out which faction, you know, loves or hates him. But now that you're saying that it seems like he's going to, the speed scores and all that, like they're going to be really good. I know his, he's a, he's a good track athlete. Um, the receiving threshold seems like they'll, they will check, check out, you know, there's enough there to say that he's, his threshold should be, you know, reasonable enough. Um, and then, you know, the workload and, and the and the yardage and the market share should should all be, you know, half decent or, or, or pretty good some years. I, th- I feel like there was some spots in this year that maybe maybe he didn't quite hit some of those bell cow quite carry numbers. But I'm not sure. I haven't looked that closely into it. But Tucker is, you know, seemingly somebody that 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 you would be. You know, it doesn't surprise me that that. That would be the guy, um, but it seems like in the, that's kind of like the next tier of running backs after the guys that you mentioned. Obviously, mm-hmm. it's Bijan and Gibbs are kind of the you know, but then it's you know sort of the you know the maybe you got Charbonnet in there, maybe not, but then it's Tucker Evans and Tank, and those guys Tank, it's, it's, love it's, Tank. It seems it's a lot to like all all of those guys. Like either you're a Zach Evans guy or you're a Tucker guy or or a Tank guy. I don't. It's it's kind of odd so far. Um, yeah, for for me, I mean. The, the one that's disappointed a little bit, and it kind of goes into your first question was just, is this class a bust compared to expectations and the price point of those random firsts? Sure. It, it's going to be really difficult to hit those expectations from even four months ago, five months ago. And Zach Evans is probably one of those guys that he he's the biggest faller for me 
up to this point. Two times now, he was unable to to take the backfield in two different uh, two different programs. And this year, TCU being, and Ole Miss. Yeah, yeah. And, and this year, uh, having difficulty uh, really being the running back one A in that offense. And for me. It comes down to the receiving work as well. Uh, And those are boxes that were checked by other running backs from both TCU and Ole Miss. So for me, he's probably my biggest faller here. I still have him as my running back five. So it's not like I'm completely shoving him uh, to the side, but the, the production and the market share numbers from Bijan Gibbs, Tucker and tank for me, there's no question. Those are my top four. So as it stands today, you look at last year's class and you compare it to this year's class, just from a running back perspective, right? For me, it's John Brees hall, Kenneth Walker, th- those two in the same tier, which could be a completely different conversation. If Brees hall didn't get injured. Sure. And then you have Jameer Gibbs, Sean Tucker and Damian Pierce. I, I got to go a kidding. little lower. I'm just for, kidding. No, I have no, no, no idea. No, no, where no. I, uh, no, no, you you got to give a little call back to our guy, Damian Pierce, but uh, I, I would take tank. Now I say I would take tank over a guy like Damian Pierce today, but that is with my expectation. He's also getting that day two draft capital. You know, uh, yeah. it, that's the thing. Looking at these these guys right now, and if you're in a Devi league, you don't really have the luxury of saying, well, let me see where he goes. Let me see the draft capital. Mm-hmm. Let me see the situation he falls into. Because as much as we all want to say it, situation still does come into play. Yeah. As much as we want to say it doesn't matter, the, the, the talent will rise to the top. And maybe more so for quarterbacks than anything, but it still comes into play because you need the opportunity as a running back to really shine and flourish in whatever system you're in. Yeah, that's what the draft capital will help, mm -hmm. you know, mitigate needing the opportunity uh, to to, or or be able to wait it out. You're going to get the opportunity immediately if you get the good draft capital. So uh, understandable, you, you would. You'd like to think that if you play the long game that you can get the opportunity and that that will rise at the top because they're undeniable. Um, but, you know, the draft capital will certainly help those things. Yeah. And the, the one that I like, you know, I know a lot of people also they're saying, well, th- this class now because of different things we've seen more information we have now with the 22 collegiate season wrapping up. Well, it's not as deep as maybe we would like. And I still think there are running backs yeah. that are coming out like like Miller from from TCU. TCU. Oh, yeah. I, I he kind of checks a lot of boxes, man. He six feet tall, two hundred fourteen pounds. He's going to be drafted at the age of twenty. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I know not, not everybody cares about that, but you're getting a running back coming into the league, taking his first snap at the age of twenty one, where you have guys coming in there. 23, 24 years yeah, old. Yeah, I mean, Najee's going to be 25 this year. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. So, uh, and, and with him specifically, you don't necessarily have the, the, the rush attempt market share from his first two seasons. And again, the, the I, I have these like kind of like profiles mapped out in my rookie data, and I have separate sheets on my my uh, my spreadsheet here. And again, I'm still looking for the, the, closure of this season sure. so i'm i don't have that in there quite yet um because i did that last year i went in mid-season put numbers in got some market share things i'm like well now i gotta go through and update it all and i'm not doing <laughs> right. i'm not doing it two times again this year. right um but he's uh the receiving work the rushing work and then another thing for me that i look at you know, and it kind of makes it more apples to apples. And this is specifically for like Sean Tucker or Cam Akers when he was coming out, who I think could be a good comparison in terms of uh, what they had to work with. Yeah. In their Offensive situation line was terrible at FSU. It was horrendous. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but uh, so one thing I look at is the rushing yard market share versus their rush attempt market share to see how they compare to other backs in the same system. 
in, in the same situation more than system. But one thing that I'm looking at is I, I want to see them eclipse 1.00 every single season because they're being at least as efficient, if not more efficient with their carries as the rest of the guys in their backfield. And Miller, he's at 1.47, his age 19 season, 1.34, his age 18 season. And from a two-year sample outside of um, – even it was still even better than Bijan's age 19 season, but like it, it's, it, it's something that I'm looking at because you see a guy and you're like, Oh, well he only had five yards per carry. Whereas player B had six and a half yards per carry. Well, if every player in that backfield for player B also at six and a half yards per carry, is it that impressive? Right. You, you know, so I think it helps compare apples to apples a little bit more, but Anyway, that's a long, long way of saying I really like Miller out of TC. Agreed, agreed. We, we just did a mock draft that should be out soon, and I, I you know, kind of had him kind of mid second right now, just because I don't know anything. I'm just we're just making lists right now yep. and and whatever. Um, but that was that was a guy that I could see being a a, a, a very quick riser mm-hmm. up into the Tucker Evans tank tier uh, as I get further into this uh evaluation there but you know just running backs you know depth wise i mean it's you mentioned the top two guys which are pretty much the top two guys then you got charbonnet tucker evans tank uh, Con- uh miller chase brown ah chain um uh, mcbride deuce vaughn uh you know just and i'm sure i'm missing even a couple there I mean, we're waiting on blake Corum to see what he does right we don't know if and he'll be he, he'll be up in the mix there you know mm-hmm. higher than lower on that list um I, I think so uh a lot of a lot of good um you know, depth for running back, which is so badly needed in the NFL right now. We're, you know, we're so down in the running back class and on running backs right now as dynasty. And I've been doing this long enough to I've seen this. And then I saw, you know, that class with with, you know, the around the cook and the CMC and the 17 and the, and the yeah. AK and the, you know, and the Kareem hunts, those guys, you know, there was a lot a big push. I'm I'm not 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 a fan of zero RB, but I can remember at that point being a heavy push at zero RB there. And then this class came in and there was so much value on the running back that it just it, it, I won a few championships in there because everybody was still over here. And, and it's not that I'm not I'm I'm fine. I'll play whatever the the value is going to be. It, I don't I'm not going to get caught up. And I wasn't drafted running backs this year because the value wasn't right. Uh, Mm -hmm. But the the value can can be swinging back to running backs. And we haven't got that replenishment like we did uh, in that 17 clash ish. We've been waiting for it and it hasn't necessarily happened. And and this seems like we could get a nice uh, little little upswing in the running backs there. Um, And then, you know, uh, Booty, Boutte, he's he's coming out, I guess, now. He, He said he wasn't and he is. So maybe one more kind of receiver to bolster that up a little bit. Um, but like I said, maybe the receivers aren't quite as the receiving classes have been so damn good the last couple of years. It's pretty, eventually you got to get a bit of a downer. I'm not saying it's a downer, but maybe there's going to be a little bit more of pick your poison kind of, what do you like? What do you don't like? Um, maybe not as much, um, you know, consensus on wide receivers. Seems like we could be ending up all over the place with how we like the wide receivers in this class. I want to say two years ago, it was it was a s- smaller class in terms of their physical stature. And you mentioned already, but with this class, Jordan Addison, six feet, 174. Uh, JSN, he's a little bit bigger, but he profiles maybe more as a slot receiver. Mm-hmm. And w- with the way he performed this year and his limited uh, opportunity because of injury, that's another reason that people are looking sure. well, why receiver class is down a little bit. But I, I like Quentin Johnston. I like him a lot. Yeah. Six foot four, 216. Yeah. Uh, he, he really worried me because I have him in a one Devi league. He really worried me to start the season. I was like, it, it's not looking great for him this year. And then it, it clicked and he, he really started to perform and put up the numbers and get the, the market share and all that good stuff that I was expecting coming into the season. Uh, you mentioned uh, Boutte. Uh, but then Josh Downs, who I like a lot, but he's only 5'10", 174. Right. I like Downs and Flowers, but both a little smaller, skinnier guys. Yep. Mims, 5'11", 183. You get uh, Rashi Hyatt. Rice, he's a little bigger, gives you mm-hmm. a little bit more size, a little older, but 
gives you that size, speed, uh, a lot of a lot of volume. I think 96 catches this year. Um, uh, but yeah, Hyatt gives you that speed, but also yeah. slender. Um, you, and and then, you mentioned Zay. I, I like him a lot. And it's going to be interesting because he's one of those guys like Devontae Smith. He went back and not that his his junior season was by any means bad, but he came back and he solidified himself. I mean, he won the Heisman as a senior. And it's a case where he wasn't an early declare, but because of that, he boosted his stock, you know, uh, his his draft profile even more. Zay is a guy that not an early declare. He checks right. a lot of boxes for me. But then you're well, JB, Chris Olave was an early declare. Look what he's doing right now. So it, it's just one of the many boxes I'm looking at. You look at the power guys coming out of power five schools. Were they an early declare? Were they not? It's certainly one thing to keep in mind. And I don't know that Zay has done enough to get himself into that conversation of not even first round draft capital, but early to mid second. And that's my concern because once you get into that third round for receivers, it's not a death sentence by any means. Yeah. And you see guys like Amon Ra going in the fourth round, but it, it certainly is something to keep in mind when you have receivers slip to that mid to late day two draft capital. But I, I yeah, yeah, I, I, I like think, I think he'll go in the second. I think he's I think he's I hope he man. looks bigger on the field than kind of what what is what the size weight uh height weight kind of says. Uh, where he's gonna be the first profile that we do. We're about to jump in on those. Um so I got a, a full sheet you know about what I like about uh Zay Flowers but uh a l- lot of fun versatile um can can do a lot of things um and I, I don't think you need to just push him into the slot I think he can mm-hmm. he can win out wide too um so you know to summarize not necessarily a bust but not maybe as quite as lucrative as maybe you thought yeah if the I I, I the big issue is going to be what people had paid for those picks coming into the season you look back I I made uh, I have a tracker of my own since I think it was June 1st, about 250 trades uh, <laughs> throughout all of my leagues. And it's, yeah. quite, it's quite a few leagues. So it's not the, the sheer volume isn't as impressive when you break it down by league. Uh, but I, I go back and look at the trades I've made involving those 23 first. Maybe I thought it was going to be a random first or I thought it was going to be an early first. And it ended up being a team that made it to the championship game. Yeah, And I look at what I gave up and I'm like, oh my God. But then on the other hand, I look at situations where I bet on it, uh, well, bet against a team that I thought, okay, I'm looking at this team. They clearly value, uh, they think their team is going to be a contender. They're looking to make a move. And then I look and that picks the 102, 103. So I, I think the big thing here, it's, it comes down to the preseason expectations, what you paid for those picks. But going to the expectation side, if the value of those picks wasn't so inflated, I think people would feel a lot better about this class. Yeah. It, it was kind of unrealistic to begin with. And yeah. it was like wood prices in 2020, you know? Right, right, <laughs> right. Uh, even we were, you mentioned wood. We were, and I could go anywhere with that after I say <laughs> you mentioned wood. But we, we moved right before the pandemic and... Uh, the fence we had in our backyard complete trash and I was like all right well wood prices are through the roof so let's look at just like you know a cheap like plastic not cheap that inexpensive cheap has a negative connotation yeah 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 and even that was like just ridiculous Um, so I couldn't get away from it wood plastic it didn't matter so yeah (laughs) Very upsetting. You brought back some (laughs) PTSD. Haunting, haunting (laughs) memories. 